Are you afraid? My two friends and I got bored one night, about five years ago. My friends Tim and Steve went with me to the woods to explore trails. We didn't go very far for deep woods since they were right behind my house. At one point we were afraid of the sounds that the woods made, but over time we got used to them. They didn't matter much. What did scare us was unexplainable though. To this day, I can't seem to come up with an explanation. We got out of this clearing and Tim sat on a log. Steve was on his 10th cigarette since we'd gotten out there. He flicked the butt down in some tall grass patch, and a few moments later, we had a small flame. It's a good thing I took water with me, because I was able to put it out with ease. I noticed something though. About five minutes after the fire, Tim was still sitting on the log, staring blankly into nothingness. I asked him if he was still with us. He didn't answer. I shook Tim, and he didn't respond. Inside, my brain became freaking out. Steve joined in to get him to respond. He wouldn't come to. All of a sudden, Tim bent over and threw up blood all over the ground below him. After he was done painting the ground, he responded to something I said 10 minutes ago. I was so confused. So I grabbed him and Steve and said we were leaving. Tim was confused, but I explained to him later. He says he still doesn't remember the event. I remember all too well. Steve researched the area later on and found that we were in a possible burial ground. We never want to go back out there again. My friend was a woods enthusiast. I went along with whatever he wanted and liked going to the woods at night myself, so that's what we did. One night when I was over at his house, we decided to go out there, so we grabbed some flashlights and went. There was a cow pasture we had to cross before we got to the woods. That really wasn't a problem. All we had to do was hop the fence and get going. When we got to the woods, he was much more relaxed than he usually was. We went trailblazing for the next two hours. We had to stop and rest, and that's when something went horribly wrong. The rain started booming down on us. Thunder, lightning, the whole nine. We ran to find a tree that would keep us dry. We found one, once we were completely soaked, of course. His light had gotten wet and shorted out, so we had to share mine. Then the worst possible thing that could have happened did. A limb fell and pinned him to the ground. He was screaming for me to get it off him. I then realized I was on the ground because he had pushed me out of the way. I scrambled to find the flashlight to find him. I ran over to the limb and strained myself to lift the giant limb off him. I had a hard time trying to move the limb off of him by myself since this was no small one. He was pinned face down so he couldn't help. We were surrounded by two miles of thick woods on either side of us. He told me to go get one of our friends to lift it. But if I left, I probably wouldn't find my way back, so I tried pushing the limb off of him. I finally got it to move. I pushed as hard as I could and finally got it all the way off of him. He got up and thankfully wasn't hurt because it actually could have crushed him. We waited in the rain in the same spot for about an hour or so. It was so thick we couldn't see, but at least we didn't have a huge disaster on our hands. Who knows what would have happened if he had gotten seriously hurt and no way to get to a hospital. From now on, he said we'll check the weather before going out and we'll take some more people when we go to the woods. My friend and I loved going out into the woods. The best time to go is at night because of the thrill. We got a little too much thrill one night when we were chased out. I don't carry any weapons, so we don't have any protection when we go. 
it kind of makes the thrill that much more real. At least in my opinion. We went out to the woods near my house one night. This particular event happened about three years ago now. Seems longer to me. We had three paths, all marked with different color ribbons. We have the markers a distance of half a dead flashlight beam away. That way so we can always see them, no matter how dead our flashlights actually are. We had these woods marked as ours, even though they were public property, but highly inaccessible. We decided to go down the orange color trail, because it had been a while. We hiked down that particular color trail, and talked about things. We also have rest stops down each trail. On this trail, there was a tree with a rabbit skull hanging off of it. We stopped at that tree to rest for about 10 minutes. As we were resting in the woods, off in the distance, I heard something over my friend's chatter. I shushed him to hear it. It was a faint sound I don't normally hear. It was a bit on the high pitched side, so we listened carefully for another sound. I could hear it loud this time. It sounded like a deer call. Was someone out here hunting now? Off in the distance, I knew what it was. But it still sounded creepy in those woods. My friend and I decided to head in the opposite direction as the call. As we walked back down the orange trail, the deer call kept getting closer and closer to us. I kept getting more uneasy as it got closer. The closer it got, the creepier it got. It got so close to us at one point. I ran and yelled at my friend too as well. I ran to a convergence that puts us off on another color trail. We turned our flashlights off, looking for anything. A flash of light, a glimmer. I couldn't see anything. That sound was following us, but it was moving around in pitch black darkness. I told my friend that we had to get out of there. At this point, he was just as panicked as I was. We planned to run for the exit, but there was one problem. The sound was now between us and our destination. I brought up the uncharted side of the woods, and without hesitation, he turned his light on and stood up. I followed and we set off towards the woods we didn't know. There were no markers, no foot trails, just dense, deep, dark woods. We thought it was better than running into who was chasing us with a deer call. We made our way through the thick brush, probably heading towards a highway on the other side. I know this is when horror movies go horribly wrong, but we could both make out a bright light that guided us out of the woods and away from the creepy deer call. We ended up coming out at an active construction site and had to sneak around it. We didn't get seen and we made our way to the highway and back to the house. I don't know who was behind that noise, but we escaped safely and we both decided not to go back out there for a while. That was a little too creepy for us. We had video games that could occupy us instead. There are things about that experience I can't explain though. How did that noise travel as fast as it did? How does it travel with no light? However these things are possible. Creepy disembodied deer call. Let's not meet. I haven't been in the woods too much since the last incident. There's something out there that doesn't want me there. This story takes place around three years ago in the deep woods of Florida. I had to bolt out to get away and I'm lucky I'm still alive to tell you this. I was hiking at a huge portion of the woods I know about when it got dark and I had to set up a tarp I brought with me for shelter. I didn't prepare for storms or anything. I just put a stick in the ground and put the tarp over it. I fell asleep under the tarp after a while, trying to block out the unusually loud sounds going on that night. I believe something was stirring the forest up. I didn't think too much of it though. I woke up when my tarp fell over on me. That was weird since I put that stick up strong. I put it back up and fell back asleep. That didn't last long as the owls started making as much noise as they possibly could. 
I stayed up for a little longer. Right when I was able to fall asleep, the tarp fell on me again. I reached for the stick that was supposed to be holding it up. The stick was still standing, how I left it. My tarp had a huge rip in it now. I went to go pull the tarp up to get it off the stick. I pulled it up and over, being careful not to rip it again. I put the tarp around the stick and strung it up there with a piece of twine I had. I tried to go back to sleep. That was short-lived, when the entire front of my tarp flipped up violently, and then was pulled down, stick and all, on top of me. I left what I could and decided to go. There was something out here that did not want me here. I had to make my way back through the woods in complete blackness. My flashlight had conveniently run out of juice, so I was kind of screwed on seeing. There wasn't any sign of the moon either. On top of that, as if the flashlight dying wasn't enough, I was being pelted by something. Maybe it was acorns? Maybe it was small rocks? All I know was I pissed something off. I finally found my way out and basked in the roadside streetlight. I won't go back in those woods. I got home and I found welts on my back and shoulders from being hit with whatever it was. I think I was camping in an area a spirit had made its home or haunting ground or something, and I invaded. No matter how much I tried to rationalize whatever it was, it was still scary as hell. Did you like this video? Well, there's more where that came from. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. And follow me on Twitter at Celestial Noor. I'll see you next time on Celestial Lore.